You know the student trusts you to honor his message because he's using the new behavior rapidly and consistently and maybe even generalizing the new behavior to other similar situations. Now you're ready to teach him to do some work anyway. You'll do this by using a time delay before reinforcement. Here's how you do it. Find a really easy manual task that the student dislikes, which you know you can physically prompt him through. Such a task might be putting blocks in a bucket, matching a picture to an object, pointing to a named picture, etc. Tell him to do the task. Because he trusts you to honor his appropriate request to escape, he'll make that request. You'll begin the honoring routine by saying, thanks for telling me ni nicely. Quickly follow that by saying, do one for me. At the same time you say, do one for me, you must quickly take the student's hand, manipulate him through doing one small portion of the task, and smile and say, good job, take a break. You take the task away and set the timer to show that there's break time. Ta-da! I found this procedure to be extremely effective if I do it very quickly. That's why my little actions there. When I'm really quick, I can surprise a student so much that he may not really be sure I had him do something before I gave him the break. Often I combine my statement, take a break, with propelling the student out of his chair toward the break area in the classroom. It all happened so fast, and he's now on a break from the dreaded task. <laughs> Over time, you can slow the process down to a normal speed, and the student will still trust you to honor his need to escape after doing one more. When you can tell that the student still trusts you to honor his request, you, be you can begin having him do two for me. You can envision how this procedure expands to the student doing a reasonable amount of work for a break. This is the wait period lengthening phase. You could add a visu visual so that the student can see how many more he must do before a break. This will help him become independent, which is what we all want, and more tolerant of requests with known endings. I've never seen this procedure fail in the initial phase but it can fail during the lengthening wait period phase. This happens when the teacher moves too quickly from do, from do one for me to having the student do many items before honoring the request to escape. When the student goes back to using the inappropriate behavior to escape a task, it's because he no longer trusts you, the teacher, to honor his request. The teacher will need to return to the beginning and go very slowly forward. All of us think of ourselves as trustworthy, but speeding through the procedure destroys that trust. Now you've got to work double hard to fix his trust. Now you've heard of a great little procedure for gaining compliance to directives. Notice that you can continue to honor the student's desires while convincing him to honor your need for him to work with you. You have a new skill, and so does a student. You have successfully changed the context of your classroom by manipulating your behavior, which has caused a positive interaction and atmosphere rather than a negative interaction and atmosphere. Welcome to Positive Behavior Interventions and Supports. You can see why I love it.